Our barn is full of 3,000 heads of hardneck garlic, and today I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about how to cook, prepare, store, dry, and cure this garlic. Right here, I have garlic in all these different phases and stages of curing, drying, and getting prepared for storage. I'm gonna take you from harvest all the way through replanting for next year. Most people only eat the root of the garlic. That's a big problem. There's actually three different areas of the garlic that you can eat. So right here, this is called the garlic scape that comes off of here. You can see it kind of comes up and it bends out like this a little bit when the garlics are in the ground. You can pop this off right here, just break it off, and you can eat this garlic scape. So I got a bunch here, I'm gonna come back to that. The other piece that you have is you have the stalk of the garlic. So while it's still green garlic before we've dried it and cure it, you can actually eat the stalk. So I'm gonna pick this one up right here. This is a great specimen that we have that just came out of the ground. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start peeling back these layers from the garlic. And normally I have a knife to just cut this down. And I'm usually eating all this anyway. So I'm eating it as green garlic. So I'm gonna peel it down, kind of like an onion, right? I'm just gonna take my knife out and I'm gonna cut the stalk right here. So normally I'm in my kitchen, and I'm gonna cut right here. So right here, this is beautiful. This is just like a leek right here. I would cook this exactly like a leek. I would just dice it up, drop it in my pan, and I would, I would take a couple of the green garlics like this, dice them up and treat them like leeks. Onions, carrots, celery, put it underneath a chicken, like a whole chicken that I'm roasting in the oven, something like that, in a pan for a sauce with maybe some beef, like in, in my short ribs stuff like that. So you can see as you peel down here, it's, it really is just like a leek. This is gonna have great onion and garlicky flavor all inside of there. Look inside of there. This is all edible, really nice. So don't waste this when it's green. Now, once it dries, it's gonna get really hard and you're not gonna be able to eat it. So what you wanna do is you wanna take and, and harvest some of those to use in the first two, three weeks as you're harvesting your garlic. As you can see, we've got 3,000 heads of garlic back here. I can grab a few of these because they just came out of the ground yesterday and I can use that stalk um, and, and prepare it. And even you could dice that up and put it in the freezer. So what I like to do is I like to take large ice cube trays and then I can dice this up and put it in the ice cube tray with water and just freeze it like that. Or even in a Tupperware where I put it all in there with some water freeze it and then I can take it out and just defrost it and I can use it like it's fresh. Really great for preserving that. Okay, let's talk about the garlic scape that we took off the top. These are a little bit mature. Usually you don't see them flowering like this. You see as they start to flower here, what happens is the garlic is putting these out because the garlic is getting towards the end of its life. So it's putting these out and these, are, these become the seed. So almost all plants, they go to seed. And what happens is the plant knows that it's gonna die and it wants to reproduce. And so it's giving all the energy to let it reproduce and drop these seeds down. We break these off every year. So we broke off 3,000 of these because what we wanna do, we don't wanna let it go to seed. Once you break these off, it gives all the energy back down to the root stock of the garlic, which is what you wanna eat. So we want all that energy to go back to the ground to get bigger production of our garlic, make sure our garlic heads are really nice and big and make sure it's not putting energy to go back to seed. If you do get these seeds, you can actually eat them though. You can pop these seeds off and you can, especially when they're more mature, if it was more mature than this, you can actually eat these seeds as well. You can put these seeds right here, if they're really big and, uh, and hard, you can put them in a garlic press and actually like smash them down or you can just drop them in um, as flavor in your pan when you're cooking. But this garlic scape is really nice. So what you can do here, like an asparagus, I like to break this. So I don't wanna eat this. This is really hard and toothsome. It's like really hard. And you could dice it up really well, but it's gonna be a little, uh, uh, a little tough to eat. So what I like to do is I like to get to the point where it's almost, it's like a green onion, right? And so what I'll do is I'll just dice this up like a green onion, and it's got an onion and garlicky flavor, like a garlicky green onion. I love it in my eggs. So I'll dice this up with a little bit of uh, raw butter in a pan and then dice this up, saute that down and then drop my, my duck eggs or my chicken eggs in there to scramble them up with some uh, garlic scape in there. So that you can eat that too. Don't, don't miss this because this is really good early in the season. Like a month before you're gonna harvest, you can start eating garlic scapes and have that garlicky flavor even before you get these big heads of garlic that come out of the ground. So now let's move on to what it looks like when we harden it. So the storage of this garlic. This is exactly what your garlic should look like when you pull it out of the ground. So you see how there's dirt on this garlic? 
We're not breaking and cleaning the dirt off. I'm not banging it against my shoe. I'm not disrupting this at all. I wanna get this out, I'll pull it out of the root, and then basically I wanna bring this bare root in here where it's all dirty. And I'll show you what happens when we can go from this dirty garlic to a dry garlic that's gonna look really good for your storage. So what we do is we take this out of the ground and then we're gonna bring it in somewhere that's, that's not exposed to the, the rain. We wanna keep these really dry. So it's best to harvest this garlic when it's dry. It's been dry for about a week and we just pulled all these out of the ground last night because last night it just poured down rain. And we knew that we were gonna lose a lot of our stock of our garlic if we didn't pull them out of the ground. I would have liked to have kept them in for probably another week, but we wanted to make sure that we had an abundance and all 3,000 came out instead of 2,500 bigger ones. So, Pull it out of the ground like this, keep the dirt on it. You could brush a little bit of the dirt off or clean it off the root. You can snip the roots a little, but you wanna keep it whole like this. C keep it completely whole. Because what happens is a lot of people will cut this right now. And what you wanna do is you wanna let this hole so it all kind of dies out together. And so we'll sit it out here, just like you see behind me, for about 10 to 14 days. So we wanted it to dry in here 10 to 14 days. I got the fans on and I got the windows open in the barn so we have some breeze through. So you want a pretty well ventilated space. This is 3,600 square feet, so it's not a small barn full of garlic. Once they're completely dry, they're gonna look like this. So you can see I've had this one in here. This is one I harvested about two weeks ago. And I just let it sit in here. And you can see the difference. This is all green, this is all dead and dried. You can even see here the color starting to change a little bit in the garlic. As it dries, and the reason why we cure it is because we want a little bit stronger garlic flavor. You can absolutely eat this green garlic right now today. It's gonna have a little bit more mild flavor, and as we dry it and store it and cure it, it's gonna have a little bit stronger flavor that we want, that we're typically used to in dried garlic that you'll get from the store or another farm that you've uh, shopped at. You know it's ready when it's starting to just kind of peel off like this. Like it's all dying, all the leaves are dead. These, all these leaves up here, these were the green leaves that, were, that you see on these other garlics. Like I talked about before, we got this dirt on here. So all we're gonna do is we can just peel off this dirt right now. And you don't wanna take too many layers off of your garlic, but you can just pop that first layer off and there you go, it's all clean. You don't actually ever have to clean your garlic. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some shears, whether they're kitchen shears or gardening shears, and you can just clip this off right here. And it's gonna be hard. Like it's, I like to clip it a little higher on the stalk so it just gives a nice presentation. And we also sell our garlic with, uh, by weight if we do sell them. So I usually clip them up a little bit higher here. It's not really heavy to add a ton of weight, but it gives it a really nice presentation that you don't see at the grocery store. At the grocery store, you're seeing a garlic like this, whereas a farm garlic is really nice when you have a nice little stalk on there. You can see this, one's, this one was green. So you can see these are all soft up here. You see how it's all soft right around here, and that's the main stem that the garlics are over top of. Whereas you see this, it's, it's really hard, and it's, all the layers are dry. This one actually, you can see, it's a little bit green in there. This could even go a little bit longer. So as I cut it, now when I cut it and store it, this is gonna harden up even more, and it's gonna be really nice to sit in your pantry for storage. So after about 10 or 14 days, we got this piece right here. I can trim this with my kitchen shears, make sure it's nice and clean. There's not a bunch of dirt on there. And this, it goes right in my pantry. And what I wanna do with this now is I wanna store these in, in an area that's got some aeration in it. You don't wanna let a bunch of uh, moisture get in here and you want it to be at relatively low humidity. So I wouldn't wanna sit these out here in my barn in a bin or a storage case. So last year what we did was we took a bin like this and we put all of these, we put 3,000 of these in about 20 of these bins last year. And we put them in there and we put them in my farm garage because I didn't have this barn yet. We put them in my farm garage and there's no air conditioning in there. It was about 100 degrees in the summer and these things were all in here with no ventilation, no way to breathe and they just started sweating. And then they just started to rot and mold. And we ended up throwing out about half of our harvest. Can you imagine half of this right here? having to be thrown out and put in the compost because it's all rotten, moldy, and soft. I was devastated. So this year, we, we did a lot of work to figure out how we can build out the infrastructure in a barn like this and things like that and how we're gonna store it. So they won't be stored in these black bins. Do not do this. You can store it in a, a laundry basket that has a bunch of openings in it. You can store it in mesh bags. You see people do that all the time. You might be asking yourself right now, well, what about like 
knotting them up like everybody teaches? What about kind of braiding them and hanging them? You can absolutely do that. However, the amount of work that it would take for me at this scale to do that, it's just not worth it to me. What I'm gonna do is we have a CSA and what I'll do is I'll deliver about five to 10 of these a week, every single week and I'm gonna teach them how to do their own storage so that I don't have to braid and store 3,000 heads of garlic. I can have them do it and just drip it out to them over time. We'll do the basic curing right here. We'll do some clipping and then I'll be able to hand it out to my CSA customers to continue to store it at their house. So think about how you're gonna store 3,000 heads if you're gonna grow this big. If not, and you got 10 or 20 or 30 inside of your garden, great. So after the harvest, what I wanna do is I wanna look at all the garlic and see how it all looks and decide, is this going to be storage garlic? Is it gonna be seed garlic? Does it have to be eaten right away or can it last a few months? So I have three different examples here for you. And this one right here is one that's really, really beautiful. It's not cut at all. It is in really great shape. It's a nice big size garlic. And so I'm going to store this. This is going to be storage garlic or seed garlic. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but basically it's just, we're planting it back for next year to increase our growth. Then this piece right here, if you look really closely here, you can see this got hit by a shovel or a pitchfork or something got cut. And so this is not going to last at all. In fact, this is gonna be the first garlic that I eat right now. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna eat the stalk, I'm gonna, I've already eaten the scape, and now I'm gonna break this up and I'm gonna eat this garlic right away in the next few weeks. Now, this one right here is a good example of one that's not gonna store very long, but can last for probably a month or two. Um, if you see an area like this that's open, this is, has no protective shell on top of the garlic. So none of this paper shell that you see on these other garlic uh, cloves. So this is gonna, not gonna last very long. This is definitely not gonna store. I wanna make sure that I eat this in the next couple weeks, couple months. So I would take a couple different bins and sort them out. So most of these, what we'll do is we'll just walk through and we'll look and see if there's any that are cut. We'll pull those and we'll start eating those right away. We don't sell those or give them out to our CSA. We eat those. And then th these ones like this would be the next ones that we look for. And this is gonna be something that we could probably give away to our CSA, no problem, uh, or we could eat ourselves. And then these really nice storage garlics that are gonna last a long time. And this can last all the way through the winter from harvesting it here in uh, June, mid-June right now. So I get asked all the time, when do you harvest your garlic? You wanna harvest when these leaves are starting to die off, but ultimately you wanna harvest when it's a really tight bulb too. So what you could do is you could pull out some test subjects like this, pull it out, and then what I'll do is I'll cut into it and actually cut it right in half and see what it looks like on the inside. I can already tell you that this is a good specimen. If you look right there, it's all really tight. So that all that garlic's really tight. It smells incredible. If you could smell the inside of this barn, it would be, oh, it's amazing. So it's all really tight cloves. What you can see on some of these is these are probably left in there too long, actually. These are a lot bigger. You can see the size is much larger, which we want. But as it starts pulling away from the stem right here, it's gone a little bit too long. So if I cut into this, you would see openings Right here, it would be pushing open around the stem of the garlic at the tops. So you can see these are starting to pull back away from the stem and open up. So they may have been in there a little too long, as you can see a bunch of space, but they're, they're not bad. Like if it's really starting to open up, then you know you've left them in there too long. But probably around, depending on what area you are, mid-June to early July is when you're probably harvesting your garlic. If you're up north uh, in the US, it might be later on towards the end of July. Let's say we stored these and we take these for the winter. In December, we're gonna start planting these back. The way that we are able to grow and sell all of our garlic is we hold back seed stock. And what that means is and a lot of people don't know this actually, me included when I got started doing this. I'm gonna break this one open so we can see it. Inside of here, we're gonna have, in this, this particular hard neck garlic, we're gonna have six cloves of garlic in here. So I've got six cloves and I'm, I wouldn't be opening it up like this like I was eating it. It would be all dry, they'd be coming apart. But each one of these is stock for our next crop. So ah, these are huge, absolutely beautiful. This one's actually got, it's got eight. So inside of here, this one garlic, we're gonna replant these cloves and each clove is gonna be a new garlic plant. So inside of this, we've got eight more heads of garlic. So what we're gonna do right here is we'll hold back about a thousand of these for seed for next year. And in the winter, 
when the farmer's market gets over in December, we're gonna plant all those out in the field. Each individual one of these will produce one head of garlic just like this. That will bring us another six to eight cloves of garlic. And we can repeat that. So we can, we can build and grow our stock. So we can hold back 1,000 and grow 6,000 next year instead of 3,000. Or we can hold back 500. We can just plan for it and adjust as needed to how much we want to hold back and how much we want to sell. We can grow our crop by holding back. Just holding back one will 6x our stock. So really, really nice. Um, I love the way that this regenerative farming works and we can just continue to allow what we've created to continue to grow and multiply. The other thing it does right now is we just opened up six or seven alleyways for other plantings, uh, zucchinis, cucumbers, beans, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, everything that we're growing right now, we just opened up a bunch of alleyways for that we were tilling last night, we're planting last night right before the rains come so that we can grow more produce and keep expanding our garden. There's everything that you need to know about garlic. I'm sure that you think that I left something out or you have a question. If you do, drop it in the comments, I wanna know and I'll answer it right there or I'll make a whole nother video just for you.